Hey, what's going on guys? This is Chris here and today we have a special video project that uh, I'm going to be uh, getting started with. It's currently May 13th, 2018 and as you guys know the French Open is coming up in just a few weeks. I wanted to do a retrospective of Nadal's triumphs at the tournament because he's had so many. He's had 10 of them and uh, I've actually watched almost all of his matches in the finals um, and I have so many thoughts on this. I know that a lot of people are interested in how he performed year by year and uh, which years were his best, which years were his worst, um, what enabled him to to win against Roger Federer and some of the other great players like Novak Djokovic that he beat in those tournaments and this video series is going to talk about all of those things so I'm really excited to bring this to you and without further ado let's get to the Nadal French Open retrospective so the first year that we're going to be talking about is 2005 but before we get into Nadal's uh, run at the French Open in 05 I want to actually backtrack two years to 2003 and this is the first time that Nadal was supposed to play at the French Open he didn't of course because he was injured and uh, was not able to enter it that year now the following year in 2004 this is a really interesting one because it was Gaston Gaudio that won the tournament and uh, he beat um, Guillermo Coria in five sets I don't know if a lot of you guys even know who Coria is hopefully you do because he was an amazing player but he beat Coria in five sets and Nadal was definitely uh, supposed to be in this tournament as well and wound up getting hurt I think a couple weeks before maybe even a couple days before the tournament actually started so he wasn't able to participate in this one either and uh, so now we're gonna jump ahead to 2005 Gaston Gaudio is the defending champion uh, Nadal has of course beaten Guillermo Coria the runner-up a couple of times up to the leading into this point at the uh, I think it was Rome and also I want to say Monte Carlo of that year so he had a very very strong clay court season leading in that's an important point to mention here but he had never won a Grand Slam. He was only just turning 19 at the time. And with guys like Federer in the draw, you know, nobody was really expecting him to win like that year. So the tournament uh, moves along and Nadal makes his way through the first rounds pretty easily. He gets all the way to the semifinals where he has to play the number one player in the world that everybody has been talking about for the last uh, probably couple of years by this point which is Roger Federer and Nadal has a decent record against him he's one and one at this point he's beaten him once on a hard court even so a lot of people knew that Nadal would be a, a, a definite threat for against Roger and as it turns out he took him down in four sets he absolutely steamrolled Roger made him really look pretty bad actually at times and uh, moves on to play Mariano Puerta in his first ever Grand Slam final it's kind of interesting that his first final was against Puerta and it really makes things a little different because the other ones of course were all against Roger but the Puerta match um, I, I did a video a few months ago called the Grand Slam that got away I don't know if you guys have seen that one yet I should definitely check it out, especially if you're Andre Agassi fans. But this match kind of illustrated uh, how Andre, at a younger age, was not able to uh, hang with the veteran player, um, uh, Andreas Gomez. And it's kind of the opposite here. It's really interesting because, while I wouldn't totally put Puerta as a veteran, you know, he's like 26, but um, he was certainly an experienced player, you know, he'd been around for a while. And Nadal is basically an up-and-comer, but Nadal played like a veteran for the most part of this match. He was a little bit shaky at times, uh, in particular in the first set, um, where I don't think he played aggressive enough against Puerta, and Puerta actually was able to take the first set away from him, even though he had a lot of opportunities, Nadal did, where he could have easily put this one away in straight sets. 
uh, but Puerta kind of stole it from him in a tiebreaker. And then in the second and third sets, Puerta really ran out of steam against Nadal. He just physically wasn't able to hang with him. The fourth set was really competitive. It went back and forth quite a bit, but I think the fact that, uh, and I should also mention this actually, Puerta had set points in the fourth set to force a fifth, but uh, I think the fact that Nadal was younger and so much stronger just um, kind of gave him the edge to get past Puerta in this uh, you know, particular final. I think if uh, he had been facing a player like Novak, you know, he pro probably would not have won necessarily on this day, but he was definitely better than his opponent in this final. So this was his first Grand Slam and the first time that he was ever ranked number two in the world. So um, it's pretty remarkable when you look back at what he was able to do at such a young age. And in tomorrow's video, we're going to be talking about his match, his uh, run actually to the 2006 French Open. So I hope you guys will stick around and join me for that one. But I want to thank you so much for watching this retrospective of Nadal's triumph in 2005. Uh, if you guys are not subscribed to my channel, I want to encourage you to, to go ahead and uh, subscribe. Uh, we've got a lot more content coming out in the future. Also, be sure to give us a like, and I will see you guys at the next one. Thank you for watching. This is Chris, signing out.